per usual, every honest channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. Set up Sunday. Let's take a look at the quarterly returns first here. At the end of Q1 2025, barring some miracle, BTC and ETH will both close negative for the quarter along with most everything in crypto. Many alts down the tune of 30, 40, 50, 60% in Q1. ETH, the worst quarter since 2018. And it could be worse than 2018 if Monday's a down day. We could actually have a new worst Q1 ever for ETH. Obviously, not having a good time over there. One thing I'll note is before COVID, Q1 was typically more negative than positive, And Q2 was typically more positive than negative. Something to think about and to chew on. ETH typically has a better first half of the year. A lot of people are going to be talking about cycles, end of cycle, early cycle, it's over. I think it's fine to think about that sort of thing. I'll talk about price levels I care about here, but I don't hear anybody talking about lengthening cycles. I only hear people talking about shortening shortening cycles. I mean, we could have a quick bear market and a turnaround with post-recession stimmies, right? Like anything is possible here. And I think it's important to keep an open mind, but not to bet the farm on any one idea just yet, especially before the tariff announcements hit on April 2nd. I've been seeing people suggest that that doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. I can tell you it does matter and it will matter because we are highly correlated to equities at the moment. So until that ends, then it matters less, but it certainly does not not matter. It matters. It matters a lot. So we get to see what the market reaction is this week on those announcements. But a positive Q2 isn't impossible, obviously. BTC only down 12. I mean, there's there's mag seven names, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, that are down much more than BTC or equal to BTC. And Tesla, I think, is down more than ETH even in Q1. On the monthly returns, again, post-COVID or pre-COVID, we had very positive Aprils. It really wasn't until after COVID that we started to get more negative Aprils. So again, I'm optimistic. Maybe it's foolish. You can let me know in the comments, but April typically a good month. September almost never a good month. Those are really the two things other than October, which is a stud. Look at this thing. Only two negative Octobers for BTC ever. For ETH, it uh, it gets uglier the later in the year it goes historically. That's just what seasonality would tell you. I would love to see if that turns around one day, but ETH kind of running out of time where you'd expect it to do better. Now, maybe some staking on the ETFs will help out performance-ish. I, I doubt it. I wouldn't be holding on to some bag expecting we're going to see some massive bounce because of that. And we'll take a look at the ETH chart. Really not much to say. Not a lot of bullishness. We're getting so low again on ETH that we are risking liquidating maker vaults. So those, those are basically loans that people are getting margin called on. They can top those up and add more money or they can just let them go. If they do get liquidated, then that hits the market and effectively just gets market sold slowly or t wapped or whatever. And that's going to push price lower for ETH even more. And we'll get right into the charts before I go any further. Let me mention today's video sponsor, Kraken Pro. Kraken Pro is a complete overhaul of the Kraken trading experience with a one-stop shop for advanced and professional traders. Kraken Pro enables efficient trading execution across multiple markets with a UI that allows for unique optimization tailored to our trading style. You can check out Kraken Pro with a link in the description of this video. Non-investment advice, crypto trading involves risk of loss. Cryptocurrency services are provided to you as U.S. territory customers by Payer Adventures Inc., PVI, DBA, Kraken. Looking at the daily cloud for BTC going into Q2, we are below the cloud. That is bearish. We're in bearish territory. Expect bearish things to occur easier than bullish things. That's what this says. Everything here is bearish, which is good news. When you're looking for bullish things, it should be obvious. Anything above 91 into Q2, 93 into Q2, the 20 week moving average is at 94.5 currently. So once we start to get above this area, if we do in Q2, that's when you know it's game on. That's also a pretty big level from the now double top breakdown. One way we could save this is with an inverted head and shoulders fractal. I'll show you the pitchfork first. If we go to the three day, we've got pitchfork support remaining. We've got higher time frame cloud support remaining. But if we're talking end of cycle stuff, theoretically, we could survive something down here. Now, I don't think we would end up surviving something down there. Sub, sub 70, I think would be tough. 
to recover from. Because then at that point, you're talking about this head and shoulders and this neckline, and then that breaking down, and it just gets uh, more bearish as you go, right? So it's possible, theoretically, that if we break this midline lower, we could survive. I also like looking at just the weekly cloud, the weekly cloud key June currently at 79. Below 79 is sort of no man's land. And historically, that has been cycle over territory in 2017. We held the key June the entire time, 2020 into 2021. We held it until we didn't. And then that effectively was the end. And that's really all we can compare to here. So not a ton of data. And it's possible that you get a crisscross, a zigzag, everything's wrong, nothing matters, TA is dumb. All that is possible, but this is about odds and probabilities. If we break 79, we probably go to 73, 72-ish. And if we go that low, we probably have a hard time recovering. That's just where I'm at in my head here. But so far, we're fine. We're just very much on thin ice currently. As we start to drift lower and stay lower, then you get a bearish TK cross on the weekly. Then you get a move into the cloud on the weekly. And that, of course, is what we saw in 2022. That's what we saw eventually in 2018. Okay. I mean, it's black and white. What does it look like now? It looks like it's potentially able to hold this level. But if it doesn't, if it does not, then we go lower. And then we have the painful discussion, which some people are going to let me know that they were right, that the cycle was over this whole time. Uh, but we will have that painful discussion about the cycle actually being over. One other way to think about this into Q2 is you've got this, which isn't perfect, doesn't look good, is not textbook. I'm well aware. You don't need to let me know that. They don't have to be perfect to end up working out. This is a remote possibility. I think everybody is in agreement here that the lower low possibility is probably more likely based on the upcoming news here. But let's say we save ourselves somehow by the grace of Orange Man or whoever, and this ends up being an inverted head and shoulders attempt. Anything above 88, we can start to get more bullish, but ultimately anything above, again, the cloud, that's where we want to be in Q2 to have a fighting chance. Now, I think we will have either one of two outcomes, either the bullish outcome or the bearish outcome, which would be a measured move of the range, currently the range from 77 to 96, let's say, that measures all the way back to the previous range we came out of, right? At that point, if we get that low and stay that low, there's probably skies falling type stuff happening in legacy. So it's not going to be just crypto, but that would be where I, I'd assume things would try to go on a new low in Q2 eventually. It doesn't have to be quick, but the angrier legacy gets, the angrier BTC will get. We can point to things like a div. We can point to things like VPVR support in the 60s, the 70s. It's possible we wick down there and reject and survive. All that's possible, but it's the bigger picture that's the problem. And we can say that the printers are going to get turned on and we're going to avoid a recession because we can and all this other stuff. Until it actually happens, until we get there, very hard to just be confident that everything's going to be okay. You know, are alts recession proof? Most certainly not. Is BTC recession proof? We'll find out. But if BTC continues to lean bearish like this, alts will certainly not be spared. Uh, this ripple head and shoulders continues to be the only thing I care about on this chart. And uh, if this goes lower, you'd be expecting $1.13 to $1.40. There is not an impossibility that this just, this just rolls over the entirety of the move. Now, that would be end of cycle stuff. That would be bearish legacy, bearish everything, right? But that is in the cards here. You can't say it's not. Until we're back above 285, that's the invalidation level. The first zone lower would be the measured move. Uh, ETH here at 1800 broke down from the support violently, continues to be oversold on the cloud, continues to have a div, bull div on the daily. None of this is going to save you. This is the weekly cloud, by the way, for ETH. Not great. Not great. 2017, it held all the way till the end. And now here, we're not only below the TK lines, we're below the cloud. So can this recover? Uh, theoretically, but it never really had bullish continuation. It never really went anywhere. And now it's kind of stuck back into the previous range. And you're having a lot of 
ETH maxis lose their religion as you're seeing ICO ETH getting sent to exchanges or getting moved, which is usually for the purposes of selling. Where could this go from here on the downside? The measured move there is 1300 to 1600, but I'd imagine it would want to probably test something down there. It's easier to, to me, to not try to short this or long this here, but to just wait, stay in cash, do nothing, go do something else, go trade something else. I don't see any reason to force any trades there. So similarly, on the weekly, it is about to lose the weekly cloud with the bearish GK cross here in the next couple of weeks. There was a cup and handle possibility that uh, everybody was talking about before this broke down. Here's your cup, here's your handle, broke out, didn't go anywhere, right? So until this can get bullish again on the weekly, it's hard to take it seriously, even on the daily. Now, this does have a similar mess of an inverted head and shoulders, potentially. Like, there's, there's a universe where this plays out. But the question isn't making that decision now, it's waiting for that decision at some level that makes sense. Maybe it's a di diagonal, maybe it's a horizontal, maybe it's 145, fine. Uh, but it's not here. You don't have to try to be a hero here. Now, one thing you could do theoretically, as you can do on any chart, something that I tried to do with WGMI that did not work, take a long at any point with a new stop loss at let's say 110 and you just hold it. And you just hold it till this either works out, which is basically 200, let's call it, where your stop loss is 110. Now, I don't have high confidence in that setup, but it is a trade. And you can measure that. And you can say, okay, here's, here's this, here's this. Why would it go to one? Uh, why would it go to 200? Well, that's the measured move. That's the cloud level. That would be a 50% retracement of the down move. The risk reward is, is there. It's a trade to take. But I think it's a little early. I like this better at 145, personally. And the rest of the alts, there's really not much anything to say. I mean, we can talk about memes, I guess, but these won't be spared and will continue to go lower if BTC gets angry. Nothing is really safe because if BTC is angry, then legacy is angry. And if legacy is angry, the world's kind of falling apart. Uh, these IHS ideas, still a possibility, definitely, but it's not a now trade not a now trade. This is a deeper into Q2 trade. So collectively, not much going on with crypto. Still, we can look at Sol BTC and ETH BTC. I don't see any bullishness there either. Vanilla downtrend. And ETH BTC, it's possible that it hits 019 or something like that. This was the, the long setup idea, mean reversion idea for ETH, and that didn't work out, right? And this is just my expectation with most of this stuff is that you can have these setups that look good and have a decent risk reward and take the trade and eventually be right. But you really got to hope that the winners pay for all the losers on the way down. Or you can just wait and be patient and look for the multi-week bottoming process. To me, the, the bottom attempt here made a lot more sense to take a swing than something randomly on the way down. At this point, you just got to wait. This at least was sideways for a few weeks before it continued to break down. But zooming out on EPTC, I really don't know why you'd step in front of the cement, tr cement truck for any reason. The last time it took multiple years to bottom, and it also had a bullish 1050 on the weekly. You can look at the 20 on the weekly. You can look at the cloud. You can look at the TK cross, whatever. doesn't mean it has to be exactly like last time, but at least last time you had some more confidence that this thing could bottom. It could be bottom here, sure, but why would it do that? I have no idea. No idea. This looks very bearish to me. So your hedges, the best hedge is always cash. The best hedge is to just sit and do nothing. The other things you could do is trade things like treasuries and bonds on either the lower end of the curve or the higher end of the curve. If we look at ag, this is the 40 of the 60, 40. This chart looks great. You're getting a breakout. You're trying to end a multi-year downtrend. You had a multi-year sideways range trying to break out. It's moving slow. It's not going to be crypto. It's going to take time, but this looks fine to me. Shy looks very good to me. This is the one to three year treasury bond ETF. And then if you want to degen it, there's 10 year 3x ETFs, right? Like you shouldn't sit in these. There's vol drag. There's all sorts of reasons fee wise not to trade this stuff. But if you're looking for something for that dopamine hit that may get a decent move, this is the type of stuff you got to look for because crypto right now, to me, it just isn't it. 
the downside risks are still too great, the uncertainty too great, and it feels very much like a coin flip. I would like this above 26, let's say, to take a stab on that one. You've also got some other defensive stuff like XLE trying to break out. It is currently at a dividend adjusted all time high, I'm pretty sure. This is just price, but sure, why not? Right? This looks better than most of crypto to me. Gold isn't for me here. It um, just feels overbought. Not that it can't keep going, but to me, that's a trade where the train has left the station for the moment. This is XLU, utilities, another defensive trade. You've got a multi-month, potentially inverted head and shoulders. You've got a cloud breakout, potentially. You've got a stop loss level of 75. Like you've got a decent setup here. Again, not going to move quickly, but it's defensive. It's not, it's, it's another way to hedge outside of crypto, outside of treasuries, outside of bonds. There's some other riskier stuff you could look at. Figs is a chart, has a similar setup like this. This is Rivian. Hasn't broken out yet. This may go bankrupt. It may go to zero. I don't know. But again, it's, it's not crypto. It's something else. And there are these periods where crypto does really well. And then there are periods where it's just dead. It's just dead money and it's bearish or it's just uncertain and momentumless. And that may change this week after April 2nd. But currently on set of Sunday, not seeing much out there on the crypto side of things. And this is MAG7, MAG's ETF. Nothing. I see nothing here. You could say it's oversold. You could say there's a div here eventually, maybe, but it is not trending bullish. I think that's pretty obvious. Some people have also delved across the pond into China. This is CQQQ. Again, it's similar to Shy, similar to US bond stuff. It might not break out. It's China, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's something else to do if you have to do something where this could do better than US legacy. And then finally with MSTR and WGMI, MSTR is still in bearish territory on the cloud in the middle of the pitchfork. This is obviously going to swing wildly depending on what BTC does, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on in Q2. Anything above 350, 60, 70 into Q2, love it. I don't like leveraged MSTR here. I don't like options on MSTR here. I barely like spot MSTR here. I nibbled a little bit. I think I'm break even from the 14th at this point. But it's something else to watch on the leverage side. If you just assume alts are BTC leverage, this is also BTC leverage. Miners also BTC leverage. Miners look horrific, horrendous. They made a new local low, a new multi-month low. Still below the Tenkin here. Stop myself out of this on the new lower low. I also took a uh, BTC trade on Thursday. Opened it at 3.30 p.m. on Thursday. Closed it at 9.40 a.m. the next day right? Such is life. This was the setup. This was the trade. That was the level at 85-ish for the stop loss. And you move on. But I'm not going to keep trying to swing my bat at everything down this list as things just don't look great generally. That's all I got for this one. Give me a like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.